In this video, we'll talk about list. List is the term used for an ordered sequence of values where each value has an index. Before we talk about lists, there's also a term called arrays from other programming languages that you might have heard about. Arrays are almost exactly like lists in Python. There's an array module in Python for using arrays. In Python, arrays can only hold data of the same type. Lists can hold multiple data types. Python arrays are better than lists memory-wise, but in Python, lists are better performance-wise than arrays. If you know about arrays from a different programming language, use lists in Python because lists in Python are faster than arrays. Most of the time, speed is more important than memory when talking about these data structures. Usually when people say array, when thinking about Python, they mean lists because lists are fundamental to Python the same way arrays are fundamental to other programming languages. When we talk about a list, just think of any list of values like a shopping list or a checklist. Every value inside a list has an index. An index is the numbered position of a value in a list. The first value in a list starts at index 0, the second value has index 1, and so on. The actual values in a list are called elements. Lists are like strings in the way that they can be broken up into their individual parts. The difference between a list and a string is that the values in a list can be of any type. Let's make a list to demonstrate. To make a list, you use a couple of brackets. In those brackets, you include each value and separate each value by a comma. Now we can write example underscore list as the first list. Example underscore list equals bracket one comma two comma three comma four end bracket. In Python, the values of a list don't have the same type. We can mix values of different types in a list like writing mixed underscore list equals bracket microwave Sam as a string comma 0 0.5 comma 10 comma then another list with 1, 2, 3, and 4 then end those brackets. When you put a list in a list, the list inside the list is called a nested list. We can print out these lists print parentheses example underscore lists and print parentheses mix underscore list. When we run this program, the lists are printed with their value. We have the first list with the 1, 2, 3, 4, and the second list with the mixed data types. We can make a list without any elements. A list without any elements is called an empty list. We can write a variable empty underscore list equals bracket bracket. When we print out empty list, there will be nothing inside it because there are no values in between the brackets. When we print this out, we have the bracket bracket. Let's talk about how you can access a list. You can ask, access each element of a list with its index. If I wanted the first element of example underscore list, which is one, I would write print parentheses example underscore list bracket zero bracket. The first element of a list starts at zero index. Now, when we print this out, we get the value of 1 because the first value of a list starts at index 0. You can see that it matches where example underscore list has 1 as the first value in the list. You simply write a pair of brackets and put the index in between the brackets. You can use the len function, which gets the length of a list, the same way that you would use the len function with a string. The last value in a list has the index len list name minus one. We can print parentheses example underscore list bracket len parentheses example underscore list parentheses minus one bracket. We will get the value four because it's the last value in the list. The last value in a list has the index len of the list minus one. We can see that it matches the placement and the values inside the example underscore list, 1 and 4. 1 being the first value, 4 being the last value. You can use negative 1 to represent the last index in the list, but most people don't prefer to use negative numbers to refer to the indices. Typically, it's just using the positive numbers, but when you use negative numbers, 
you can access the indices, indexes, backwards in reverse order. Negative 1 being the last value. Like with strings, if we were to access an index of a list that does not exist, we get an index error like so. We try to get len parentheses example underscore list, but that doesn't exist because that goes out of bounds to what the indices in the list are. Let's talk about using iteration and loops with lists. The while loops and for loops that we talked about in previous videos can be used with lists to visit and get the values of the list. You might want to visit every value in a list. If you're visiting every value in the list, then you should use a for loop because there's a counting process where you have to have a start position progressing towards an end position. I'll repeat the most popular for loop concepts that we talked about in the last video. The most popular way of using a for loop with a list is visiting every value of the list, like so, for i in example underscore list colon, print parentheses i. This for loop is the simplest to make. It uses the for keyword followed by a variable that you name. I use i in example underscore list, which means i will take the value of each value of the list at each step. When you want to create this type of for loop, the general setup is always something like for variable in list colon, then do something to a variable. Make sure you have that tab to the right for anything inside this for loop. If you read the for loop in English, it becomes easier to understand. For every variable in list, do something to the variable. I will delete this setup and then I will run the program. I get the contents of the list printed out line by line, like how we printed out the characters of a string in the last video. We have one, two, three, and four. The second popular way of traversing a list with a for loop is using a numerate keyword. Using a numerate keyword allows you to not only get the value of each position in the list, but also gets its index. For example, we can write for index comma value in enumerate parentheses example underscore list parentheses colon print parentheses index comma value parentheses. We use the for keyword followed by two variables this time around. I name the variables index and value, then enumerate the list. Enumerate allows you to retrieve both the index and value in that order, which is why I use the variables index comma value. When we run the program, we'll get the index followed by the value printed out. And you can see if we run this program, we'll get the indices on the left side followed by the actual value at that index. This is very useful when you need the index and the value. Let's talk about checking if a value is in a list, checking for membership. Let's create a new array called appliances. And the appliances list will contain a few strings, microwave, stove oven, refrigerator, and dishwasher. Let's say that we want to check if microwave was in the list. We can use a conditional and we can use the in keyword. The in keyword will check for membership. If parentheses microwave in appliances parentheses colon tab to the right print parentheses microwave in appliances. When we run the program, since microwave is inside the appliances list, we get microwave in appliances. The conditional is true. Using the in keyword is used to check for membership in list. You can use operators on list. Let's say that I want to combine two different lists. A equals bracket one comma two, B equals bracket three comma four, C equals A plus B. You can use the plus operator to, com to combine two lists. Print parentheses C. C becomes a new list with the contents of A and B. The list will be bracket 1, 2, 3, 4. When I run the program, I get the new list with A and B's val list values, as you can see. The multiply operator can also be used. It repeats the contents of a list. For example, let's say that I want to multiply A's contents by three times. I can just do a print parentheses A with the asterisk, which stands for multiply, 3. When I run the program, I get the contents of A multiplied 3 times in a new list. So I get the 1, 2, then another 1, 2, then another 1, 2. 
the values inside a which were originally 1 comma 2 are tripled because I multiplied a by 3. We call using operators on lists list operations. In the last video, we talked about string slicing, which was the ability to grab a subsection of a string without using a for loop. Lists can also use slicing, list slicing. Example underscore list equals bracket a comma b comma c comma d comma e comma f. If I want to get a list with just a, b, and c, and I didn't want to use a for loop, I would use list slicing. I can create a new array called half underscore list, set it equal to example underscore list with bracket 0 colon 3 bracket, and print out the half underscore list. How string slicing worked is you have a start position followed by a colon followed by the end position plus 1. The start position 0 in string slicing is, in is inclusive, so is list slicing. Example underscore list at index 0, which is A, is included in the new list. Then the string slicing visits every value in between start position until end position. The end position, 3, is non-exclusive, which means that example underscore list at index 2, which is C, is included in the new list. But example underscore list at index 3 is not included. 0 is inclusive, 3 is non-inclusive. When we run the program, we get half list which is a new list with A, B, and C. In the last video, we talked about how strings were immutable, meaning that we could not change the characters of a string with different characters. Lists are mutable in Python. In contrast, we can change the elements of a list. Example underscore list at 0 equals B. We can print out example underscore list. When we run the program, the first value of the list is changed to B. You can also do fancy things like use list slicing to assign new values. For example, I could use list slicing to change the first three values of the list. Example underscore list bracket 0 colon 3 equals a new list bracket x comma y comma z. I'm going to write that right now. Using string slicing, I'm going to replace the first three values of this list to x, y, z a new list. And what you will see when I print example underscore list is that the first three values will get the values of x, y, z, but they'll be a part of example underscore list. So what you did was you use list slicing to get the first three values, then reassign them with x, y, and z. Let's say that we want to add new values to the list. There's a very useful append function that lists can use to add new values to the end of a list. Example underscore list dot append parentheses g. Then I will do append for h and dot append for i. And I will print out example underscore list. When I run this program, we can see that the last three values of the list will be g, h, and i, which were added with the append function. Dot append adds new values to the end of a list. We can see the g, h, and i clearly at the end of this example underscore list. Now let's say that we want to sort the values in a list. But before we do that, we should mix and match this example underscore list list because it's already in order. So let's change this up a little bit. Example underscore list equals, let's do b, a, e, c, f and d in that order and then we can use the list sort function now you can write example underscore list dot sort parentheses and then print parentheses example underscore list sorting a list can be very useful all you need to do is add a dot sort at the end of a list when we run the program we can see that the values in the list have been sorted in alphabetical order after mixing up the list's values you just add dot sort to the list, print it out, and the list has been sorted with that list function. Now let's say that we want to take that sorted list and reverse it. We can write example underscore list dot reverse parentheses and print out the new list. All you need to do to reverse a list is add a dot reverse parentheses to the list. When we run the program, look at that. That's a reverse list of the sorted list. The last thing that we'll talk about is a list deletion, which means that I can delete values in a list. 
Let's say that I want to delete the last value in the list. First, I'll get rid of this example underscore list dot reverse so that we have the sorted list. And then all you write is del for delete example underscore list. And then I'm going to delete the last value len parentheses example underscore list minus one. And I'll print out example underscore list. When I print example underscore list, f, which used to be the last value of the sorted list, has been deleted. There are more functions that you can use with lists, but we've talked about the most useful ones so far. Google is your friend, so if you ever can't figure out how to get a specific value from a list or do something with a list, Python might already have a built-in function that does exactly what you're looking for.